Good evening everyone. This is Manas your friend and tutor. Today we are starting officially AutoCAD classes and it's going to be our first lecture today. And let me start with a very dramatic statement that believe it or not the software that you are about to learn was launched in the year 1982. That means 40 years back. Most of the guys who will be watching this video weren't even born at that time. Every year a new version is released, a better version from the previous one with bug fixes, with new features, with new tools, new panels and the entire layout, the entire interface is such that you will be able to communicate whatever ideas you have inside your brain into this graphic screen in the best possible manner. So that's AutoCAD for you. And throughout the journey, I'll be teaching you all the tools which are necessary, which are industry specific and believe me. A lot of people in the industry say or rather claim that there are very few people on this planet who make use of almost 10% of the AutoCAD capabilities, right? And a lot of people use almost 5 to 6% of all the resources and capabilities that AutoCAD has to offer. But if you are in this range, 5 to 10%, well, you are good to go. And if you can make a skill set or develop a skill set, which sort of connects with your industry, maybe piping industry or something else, then you can do very well in that field. Okay, so without further ado, let's kick off with some of the very important tools, some of the very important ribbons, tabs and panels. And let me rather introduce you with all of these. A very brief introduction. Here we go. Let's launch the application. Let's click on AutoCAD. So right now I'm running the 2018 version. You guys can upgrade obviously go with the 2020 or 21 version of it, right? Don't worry, whatever version you are working with, it is good. The interface is pretty much same. Okay. It's just that every year, new tools, new panels are introduced, new features are introduced rather. Okay, let's let's open this. Okay, let's see how the initial interface looks like. Here we go. Okay, so the window has already opened, you can see there are three columns, get started. Okay, recent documents and notification. Let me just breeze you through all of them. And then we are going to get to this panel also. Okay, let's let's start with this start drawing panel. Um, as soon as you click on it, a new page is going to open in the graphic screen. Let me just show that to you this way. Click on start drawing and this is exactly what opens up. Okay, you can see the grid lines. I'll explain you all of that. Don't worry. And let me just close this. Let me move back to that initial window, right? As soon as you click here, you can see there are a lot of templates and by default, your drawing will be either acad.dwt or, or acad iso.dwt. So these are the two standard formats that if you don't know about anything about templates and as soon as you click on start drawing, these are going to be your file extensions. Now that's the get started. This is the recent documents column all the AutoCAD files that you had prepared in the past and something that you've already opened, this is going to show up. Then this is the notification column here. Um, it is going to have your AutoCAD subscription, your name written over it and a lot of things are there. Okay. Then you've got this application button over here. Here you can open a new document. You can open an existing document and these are rather my recent documents. All of these things can be worked out and one by one, you'll be learning a lot of things in each and every lecture. There is something new, right? And I'll be giving you a lot of practice sessions also. Okay. I think the time is right that we get inside and start drawing. Okay. Once we enter this, this is the graphic screen guys. This is the graphic screen. Okay. That's the graphic screen. That's the application window. And this over here is known as the quick access toolbar the quick access toolbar. I think there are tools in the form of a blank document or a blank drawing file. Then this would open an existing drawing file. Okay. Then this is the save button. I mean, before even hitting on the save button, you need to save the file, save as whatever file name you write, whatever extension it is. And then this is the print button print printing in AutoCAD is a different signs altogether. Don't worry. We'll be, I'll be taking you through all of that thing. Secondly, this is the information bar. You can see it's written type a keyword or freeze. Let's say you want to know something about the trim command or let's say the rotate command. You just write rotate here, hit enter 
right you need an internet connection obviously and then it is going to let you know it is going to give you information on the rotate command and each and every command can be searched here okay it this this also has some some important things in the form of your name and all subscriptions and all all of that stuff okay so that was all about the application toolbar not the toolbar application button the quick access toolbar and the info bar right now let us take a look at this ribbon panel over here you can clearly see that there are going to be file tabs in the form of home insert annotate parametric each and every tab is an encyclopedia in itself right okay so i'll be dedicating separate sessions for understanding all of those things even inside the tabs if you take a look there are panels here we've got the draw panel let's say you want to draw a line you click on line and then select any point on the screen go over here make a line okay this is how you do do stuff okay let me just remove this i think i would okay similarly in this draw panel you can use the circle command i mean there are different ways of making a circle let me just give you a glimpse there are as many as one two three four five six methods through which in different circumstances you'll be using them really okay so let's say you want to use the center radius method so you just fix the center okay then give whatever radius you want and then click that's it that's exactly how a circle is made and there are much more applications we will be talking about all of these tools in separate videos don't worry then there is this modify panel okay so once you have already drawn something and you want to modify it you have to access this panel modifying panel some people also call it the editing panel then there is this texting dimensioning and all of that stuff obviously whenever you are drawing something if you 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 have to provide dimensions otherwise the drawing is of absolutely no use right so this basically is the ribbon area you've got tabs above it and you've got tabs below it this is the drawing area this is the start tab okay you can again start a new drawing on a new tab and this is this is the graphics area and this is the draw tab i think i think that would be enough now let us take a look at the view cube what you see over here is the view cube just take a look let me let me let me let me just show this to you in the bottom left part of the screen what you see is the traditional x and y axis basically this is the user coordinate system i'll come to that for now let me click on this this home button you see over here okay now in engineering drawing i'm sure you guys must have learned about views the front view the top view the side view the right hand side view left hand side view and all of that okay so these are basically the different views that you can have access to while making drawings well this comes in very handy especially whenever we are making 3d models so let me just click on click on this top and then we are back to where we began okay so that was all about the view cube moving on let us talk about the cursor which helps us uh, make drawings edit them and also in navigation okay so here it is here we go you can see that there are two perpendicular intersecting lines and right at the point of intersection you've got a cube that is your default cursor number one let's say i want to make a rectangle so i go over here select the rectangle tool and then now what you see is the point selection cursor now okay right at the intersection of the two lines there is no cube before there was a cube okay so i just need to select two points one point over here and then one point over here make a click and here you go you've got the rectangle so by now you saw this is the default cursor and let's say i want to make a circle i select circle now what you see is the point selection cursor let's make the circle here we go done and dusted now there is another type of cursor uh let's say i want to rotate this rectangle so what i'll do is i'll hit click on the rotate tool okay now you see the cursor changes there is only that cube in between okay none of the intersecting lines can be seen so this is what you call the object selection cursor or the object cursor in general you just select the object through it and then it's asking enter specify the base point and then you can rotate this rectangle as per your choice you can input the number of degrees through which it has to be rotated and things like that 
okay don't worry i'll be teaching you rotate command in detail and we'll be practicing a lot of things okay so that was basically this hit escape and you're back to this default cursor hit on any command for drawing you see a point selection cursor hit on any edit command what you see is simply the object selection cursor that's it okay so the next thing that we are going to talk about is what is known as the command line or the command palette just take a look over here this happens to be the command line or the command palette so i would be referring it to as the command line okay now let's say i just simply write l type l okay it's it does it's not necessary that you have to type l over here okay if you write l then there are different options obviously autocad is a huge software there are so many tools and obviously each one of them has got a name now there are tools which start with the letter l so all of them are going to reflect over here which one do you want to choose okay that depends even if you don't if you even if you don't uh, use this command line approach you can simply write l and automatically it is going to show up over here you can use click on this line and then start making a line it's so damn simple control z okay escape back to this default cursor anyway so it is possible that uh, after you install autocad this is not visible okay let me just remove this remove this but as soon as you hit control and nine this command palette this floating command palette returns right so that's command line or command palette let us move forward user coordinate system this over here is called the user coordinate system and let me just show this to you in a much more better fashion i think let's let's click on home okay so user coordinate system in general has the traditional x and y axis i'm sure you guys are good enough in coordinate geometry right both in 2d and as well as 3d are dealing with x y or the x y z coordinates let's let's click on this actually the z this is the z axis so if you ask where is the z axis in this frame well it's right out of the screen that is the z axis user coordinate system and as you go along through all these sessions in autocad you'll be learning a lot of things how to use this view cube and navigate through okay now the layout tabs very important and uh, once you start working with a client there is a possibility that you might be using them well as far as my lectures are concerned we'll be pretty much making all the drawings in this model tab let me tell you um let's say you're a civil engineer and you've created a model of the house right that will be constructed now obviously that house is going to have a plan by plan what i mean is the top view obviously that house is going to have an elevation and there are going to be so many elements inside that plan and elevation when i say elevation i mean to say the front view now what you can do is if the house is too big if the drawing is really big with a lot of details you can make the house in this in this you can make the plan in this layout one you can make the elevation in this lower two you can also create one more layout over here right and in that layout you can uh, make the sectional elevation the or the sectional front view you can see the staircases and something like that so all of these things can be worked out based on your client's requirement you can organize and structure your drawing in the best possible fashion all right so we've reached the final part of our video and here we'll be learning the status bar here it is there are going to be whole lot of tools that i'll be explaining you in brief it's going to be very interesting and these are the tools through which you can make your drawings come alive you can make your drawings very very precise very very professional let me tell you why okay now there are going to be whole lot of options in the status bar if you just click at the bottom right corner you're going to see three parallel lines just click on it right so these are the tools available now the ones with the tick are reflecting over here the ones without the tick well i haven't switched them on let's say i haven't activated them if you want let's say transparency or line weight into the status bar just click on it and automatically it will appear okay 
Now, initially, when you install AutoCAD, I am having the 2018 version. You might be having a lower version or an upper version. I did not have this infer constraints and dynamic input, but uh, the kind of work that I was doing involved these two. Okay, so I switched them on and I got them on the status bar. Anyway, let's start by understanding some of the tools very briefly and it's going to be very easy. Just take a look. Here we go. That's the first one. This is the display grid. Right now, it is active and you can see this grid. Let me zoom in using the scroll. Watch this. These all horizontal as well as vertical lines form some kind of a grid. And these are what you call the grid boxes. These are what you call the grid corners, right? Okay, so if I again click on this, it will disappear. Click on this, it appears. Click on this, it disappears. So so let's let's keep it on, something like that. The second tool that I want to discuss is the snap tool. Okay, it's, it's, like, it's like a magnet. So if you bring an iron filling close to a magnet, what will happen? Bang, it will stick. Okay, it will snap. That's the right word for it, snap. Something, something of that sort happens uh, with the cursor. Let me just demonstrate what exactly happens to you. Uh, right now, right now, let's try and draw a line. Okay, you can draw a dry line uh, from the middle of this grid box to just a second to somewhere here then go here so anyway at any point on this graphic screen you can you can make the lines okay you can make the endpoints okay forget about this the difference that this snap mode makes is this let me just again select the line command and then if you can move your cursor only to these grid points you see right and not in between those two grid points always on a grid point so uh, this is how your cursor is restricted its movement is restricted it can either move to this grid point this one this one this one not anywhere in between so that's the beauty of grids right okay let me switch it off i don't like it let me remove this so these were the two tools the third one that i want to discuss and i want to stress upon is this what do you call the infer constraints okay and let me just right click on it go to the settings you can see that these are the different properties right these are the geometric constraints let's say perpendicularity horizontal parallel vertical tangency so let's let's discuss a few of them okay um let's say i want to make a line right i am making right now horizontal vertical horizontal vertical lines right what happens if i switch this on if what happens if i activate this let me activate this and now let's draw those lines again horizontal vertical horizontal vertical okay let's let's have the line once again horizontal vertical so what you see i don't know whether you have realized this or not something beautiful has happened this over here represents a horizontal line there is this property which automatically activates okay whenever you activate this command what's the command not the command but but rather a toolbox infer constraints and this one represents perpendicularity okay over here as well right this one represents horizontal this one represents vertical so th this is how you can help yourself make better drawings let me remove this switch it off now this one is very important you must always Keep it activated because it's very helpful. And let me tell you why. Let's say I want to draw a line of uh, say length 30 millimeters, let's say, right? So I select any point on the screen and then I have to move 30, I have to move by 30 millimeters, let's say, uh, let's say in the horizontal direction. So uh, right now I don't know where to stop. I don't know where to stop and where exactly is 30. If I zoom out, if you watch carefully, then this is 30 very close very close but not exact i want uh, the length of the line to be exactly 30. Uh, this task is getting a bit difficult for me because right now i cannot reach 30 okay i'm very close to 30 but i cannot reach the exact value so the kind of solution that i have is in this dynamic input so if i switch it on 
And now if I try and draw a line, just take a look. Click on the screen and now you see this, this is the dynamic input. Okay, you just, from the keyboard, you'll, here it is, this keyboard over here, you just need to type in 30 and enter, bingo, that's a line of 30 millimeters, okay. That's it, 30. Okay, I'll be explaining you the dimensioning also, but don't worry. That's 30 millimeter long line. Anyway, um, so dynamic input is very important, right? Let me erase this. And now let us try to learn what ortho mode is. This is the ortho mode. Just take a look. Ortho mode. Well, it can be activated through this F8 also. Now, what happens when you don't have the ortho mode on? And what happens when you switch it on or rather activate it? Let's say we only want to draw horizontal and vertical lines. You can clearly see um, uh, it's, it's a bit difficult making horizontal and vertical lines. Uh, right now they're not perfect. I want my cursor to move absolutely horizontal or vertical. That means orthogonally. When I say orthogonal, I mean stuff which are at 90 degrees. So what we can do is, let me erase this. Let me switch it on orthogonal. Let me select line, go horizontal, go vertical, go horizontal, go down vertical, go left horizontal, go down vertical, go right horizontal, go up vertical. And now you can clearly see that all the lines that I've made are absolutely orthogonal to each other. They are navigating, making sure that they make an angle of 90 degree with the previous one, right? And that's the beauty of the ortho mode. There will be times when you have to activate this, okay? I do this very often. Right. So I'm sure that you've now understood the ortho mode. Now there is another beautiful mode, which people often use to um, create isometric views. And this is going to be uh, rather, this is going to come in very handy when you make those isometric drawings. Beautiful. Let me tell you this one, this tool over here, polar tracking, <laughs> very beautiful. Okay. Let me just show you the options that we have. Look, there is this 15 degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, this option. Let me just select this option and let us just start by making a drawing. Okay. Um, mark any point on the screen, move horizontal, right? Now, as you saw in the options, we have 15 degrees and then there is a jump to 30 degrees and there is a jump to 45. So basically a difference of 15 degrees, 15, 30, 45, 16, so on and so forth. I'm sure you got the point. Now, what we'll try to do is, let me let me make the line once again. Here we go, select the line, zero, and then just increase it. Let's say we want to make a line of 20 millimeters. So type in 20 and 20 millimeters, one sec, one sec, 20 millimeters long line at an angle of 15 degree. So when you reach this 15 degree angle, you can see this green line over here. Okay, and that's the beauty of the command. You can also, you can also have the green line at an angle of 30 degrees. Here it is. You can also have the green line at an angle of 45 degrees. You can also have the green line at an angle of 60 degrees, then 75 degrees, then 90 degrees. And that's the beauty. Then 105, 120 and so on and so forth. So first of all, let's make a line, let's say, which is at an angle of 30 degree, but a length of 25 millimeters. Bang. And then we want to make a line which is at an angle of, let's say 120 degrees. So that's 90 degrees, that's 120. Okay. And I want to make a line of, let's say, um, 15 millimeters. Okay. I'm, I'm sure that you've got a fair idea of this command. Just hit enter and that's it. I'm sure you got a fair idea about how to use this tool. Okay. Right now, let us switch it off. Okay. And done and dusted. Okay, there is another tool, final one. Okay, let's discuss about it. Uh, let me show you the options. Endpoint, midpoint, center, geometric center. What does this mean? Let's say I've made a line, something like this. Let's say I want to make another line from this point. I want to join the second endpoint to the center of this line. So where is the center of this line? The center is somewhere here. You can clearly see the triangle representing. Okay, so oh, control Z, right? 
if you want to join the other end of this line with the end points of the line over here again if you bring this near it will snap if you bring it here it will snap and that's the beauty of this command okay what is the name the name is <laughs> object snap right object snap okay now if you don't switch it on there is, there is a issue what is the issue now if you draw a line here it is the line and again you want are making a line and you want to see where the midpoint is the midpoint cannot be seen but once we switch it on the once you switch it on the midpoint is visible the end points are also visible and that's the beauty of the command okay i think we've we've had enough chat regarding most of the tools um, the interfaces the panels the tabs and uh, we've pretty much got a brief tour about the interface in autocad and as this class goes along we'll be learning a lot of things okay the more we practice the better we get and that's the funda with which we'll be going ahead in these autocad classes so that was all from my side for today this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a nice day keep learning keep watching thank you